Armando, which of the three amigos has most receiving yards? Thank you for the contribution. The three amigos being the freshman wide receivers from last year, Jacoby George, uh, Rashard Brinson, and uh, R- sorry, Romello Brinson, Rashard Smith, and Jacoby George. Okay. Uh, in case anyone was wondering who is specifically yes, referenced. I didn't know. Uh, to me, I think it's going to be Jacoby George. I think that he is in a really good spot to really take a major step forward in – uh, targets and everything, and I think that Brinson is a little redundant to what Frank Ladson brings uh, as a transfer from Clemson to the roster. Those two things being said, then I think that, yeah, George has the ability <clears throat> as the number three option. So if you're talking about uh, starters of, you know, uh, Keyshawn Smith, sorry, sorry, Keyshawn yeah, I was right. Keyshawn Smith, Frank Ladson, and then Jacoby George uh, as like that third or fourth. If you want to have a dedicated slot guy as the number three, maybe. Uh, but I think that he's in a spot where he could step up to have the most yards of those three uh, past freshmen moving into sophomore year. When I hear the term three amigos, I immediately go to Mark Jackson, Ricky Nateel, and Vance Johnson. Can anybody hit that in the chat? Anybody know who I'm referring to there? So a little trivia question. Like Georgia Tech basketball or something? Ricky Nateel, Vance Johnson. This is before your time. Not a long time before your time. Ricky Nateel, Mark Jackson, Vance Johnson. The three amigos. Nant. While uh, Cam possibly stores that away in the back of his mind, he will answer this one. Falcon Rex, appreciate you being here with always the <laughs> odd number on the Super Chat. 543. If Cam Underwood was a real superhero, what would his superpower be and what would his outfit look like? I have no idea. Singing oh, really loudly. On, you get an answer. A... You always uh-huh. have an answer. I mean, uh, I would say uh, just having Banshee-like volume, and I don't even know. It would just be maybe be just a, a tuxedo or a Tails tuxedo, which was our concert uniform in, in college or something. You know, just you know, being able to turn the volume up to, to levels unseen, which unfortunately I had to do at the secret day job the other day. And everybody was – actually, you know what's even unfortunate? I was, I was singing – I forget what I was singing – I was I was walking around and I was singing a Justin Timberlake or part of a Justin Timberlake song and I just it was like one thing and like multiple people were like, Yo, are you good? And I was like, Yeah, like what do you mean? They're like, Oh yeah, no, we yeah. but you know, because yeah, I'm 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 loud sometimes, but I would say something like that. Falconer X didn't ask the question of me, but uh, when when you think of outfits for superheroes, you know, tights and capes come to mind first and foremost. <laughs> right. So I, I just want to stay away from that. Yeah, but no uh, yeah, the the superpower would be a, a interesting one to you know, flying, being invisible, you know, being the Flash with supersonic speed. Those things come to mind for me. Absolutely. Uh, nice exchange between George, of course, the Gators fan who joins us on a regular basis and people asking him, Brian, why are you here? And George, <laughs> George, George, George's response is, I was hoping I was irritating you. Well, I mean, ask a question, get an answer, I guess. So, yeah. Daryl, thank you. Omar, got it. The late 1980s oh. wide receiver core for the Denver Broncos with John Elway at quarterback. Got it. Uh, J.R. Jefferson, I don't want to, or Epperson, I'm sorry. And, and others got it. I'm not going to go through the list, but others got it as well. Very nice. Um. Spring football, spring football. So you've covered this program for quite a long time. And as a member of the media, how difficult is it for you to get valid information that you can trust 
out of spring practice to where you feel confident in making player assessments? <sighs> I mean, specifically for me, you know, it's tough because I don't do this full time, you know, so. Which amazes me based on right. the amount of information you've got stuffed in your head and current <laughs> yeah. information. Like I got, I've got historic information stuffed in my head and like roster personnel mm -hmm. in my head, but you seem to be like, yeah, 30 minutes ago, this came out and 42 <laughs> minutes ago that came out. And I'm like, well, huh? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I am a, I, I, I just read a lot and I, you know, talk to people and, you know, there are some people that I trust, you know, around uh, the program and various levels and things. But yeah, it is, it's always been, I mean, State of View is a fan side of the blog. Like, let's put that out there first of all. So I've never claimed to be a full time journalist. I've never claimed to be an insider or the guy most plugged. Or I've never claimed to be those things because I'm not those things. And I'm very comfortable in the lane that we have created and that we respectfully dominate over, you know, in terms of commentary analysis. I'm very comfortable with that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it is difficult because, you know, having been invited sometimes, it's just like, well, I have the secret day job or, you know, previously, like, I teach, you know, and, or I taught, and, you know, this is district's season right now. I think districts in Broward County for vocal music is probably this week or next week, just looking at the date and knowing the schedule, you know what I mean? So that's 12 hour days at the schoolhouse. That's rehearsals. That's not, no, I don't have time at 1030 or 930 in the morning on a Tuesday to schlep myself down to Coral Gables. I, I have something else. So there's that barrier that's just in general, you know, because of, of how we do, how I do things with the fan sided facing blog. But past that, you know, it's really just every data point adds to the depth of the conversation and the analysis, you know? So if you see one play put out by Kings football in a video form on social media, that's great. What else happened? You know, like, oh, talking to, you know, whomever. Oh, you know, because there's people who go to practices, you know, um, civilians, non-journalists or whatever. It's like, hey, Bob, you were at practice today. What did you see? Well, yeah, like Mark Rogers made that great catch. Mark Rogers also dropped four balls and had to do some up-downs because of whatever else. Oh, didn't see that because they're not necessarily going to put that out there. You know, you got to listen to the coaches. You got to listen to the players. And then just like, you know, I mean, obviously, having been in this industry for a long time, you understand how it is to read between the lines a little bit of, you know, yeah, we're working hard on some things, blah, 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 which is, okay, we're working hard on some things because some things aren't going well. And it's like, well, you know, defense is going really strong and everything, and the offense, you know, they're just still in the install. Blah, 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 blah. So the offense is struggling to move the ball, whether it's rushing or whether it's passing, because the defense is more read and react, and they're trying to do – so you had to kind of – divine through you know you have to kind of weave your way through what's said to find the center of things so it can be a little challenging but um when you and to your point like i see everything i read everything eventually right and you just file all that together and then eventually you're going to kind of get what it looks like um and oh you know with a, a viewpoint that i think is reasonable based upon everything that's out there that's been you know said, heard, seen, reported, all those things.